Hi everyone, Sterling Sandwich here with another ARMA 3 tutorial. In this video, we're going to be going over the cinematic camera modules that come with the SOG Prairie Fire CDLC. You can use these modules to create some interesting open, opening cinematics for your scenarios. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Uh, you can see I've created a little FOB with uh, some details and some troops laid out and some um, artillery pieces and things like that. Uh, and maybe before the uh, beginning of this mission, even though we're not going to spend a lot of time in this FOB, we would like to get a cool um, cinematic shot and show off all the work we've done to make it interesting. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. The first thing we'll do is place a, a cinematic base module, which we can find under the SOG CDLC modules. We're going to go ahead and open up the settings here and set autoplay to on. Uh, that will cause the uh, cinematic to play at the start of the mission. And then we're going to go ahead and start placing some cameras. Uh, we'll go ahead and place the camera shot module found under the same menu. And uh, one thing that we're going to do is we're going to change the name of this module. It's probably um, good practice to do this with a lot of things, especially things that you're trying to keep track of in sequence. So since we want these to be in sequence, we're going to go ahead and rename this one Shot 1. Okay, uh, now what I'm thinking for our shots here is that we want one shot that's kind of rising up over the base and then maybe swinging out to the left here. Uh, and then we have a helicopter incoming to pick up our troops, so we want a cool shot uh, panning across and watching that helicopter uh, approach the base. And then uh, to close out our shot, we want a, a shot that kind of approaches our character uh, and zooms into the transition uh, to where we start as our character in the FOB. So that's four shots. Uh, we'll kind of lay out how we're going to do those now. The first shot that we want is the one that's rising over the base here. So what we can do, um, the settings on this camera module are um, pretty self-explanatory. There's the length of the shot, uh, the time acceleration during the shot, which just changes how the scenario progresses while that shot is running. Uh, we have the start, end, and target positions, which are pretty self-explanatory. Uh, we have the starting and ending field of view for the camera. Uh, we're going to go ahead and set the cinematic border to on, because we want this to be a super cool cinematic shot. Uh, and then we have a couple of intro effects, duration, we'll set that to one second. We have an outro effect, uh, outro duration. Uh, and then you can change the vision mode uh, to night vision, thermal imaging, things like that uh, under the vision mode. Um, the focus uh, changes the distance and the blur of the camera. Uh, I haven't played around with that too much, uh, but you can change those to get different results. Uh, attach to will allow you to attach the camera to a specific object, and then the attach position will um, allow you to change the relative position to the model. Uh, we won't go over those right now. You can play around with those and see um, how those work. But for attach to, you just put in the um, the variable name of the object uh, that you want to attach the camera to. All right, uh, so we want this shot to be 10 seconds. We're not going to change any of the camera or the time acceleration. Uh, and now we're going to go ahead and get our different positions for the cameras. So what we want it to do is kind of rise up from behind these rocks here. So I'm going to right click uh, on the map and click, uh, go down to log and click log position to keyboard. That will get me the, that position uh, on the ground. We'll go in here, and we're just going to paste that into the start position. We want it to start 10 meters above the ground instead of at the ground level, because if it started at the ground level, it'd start in the rocks. So we'll go ahead and change that Z value to 10. We actually want this camera to go straight up, so I'm just going to paste that end position uh, as the same location, but we're going to set that end value to 50 instead of 10. So the camera is going to rise during the duration of this shot. Click OK. Now we're going to go set our focus position, or our target position. Uh, we want it to focus on kind of the middle of the base, so I'll go ahead and right click here in the center. We'll click Log Position to Keyboard, or to Clipboard rather. And we will paste that into here. We'll just leave the Z value at zero because we want it to focus on the ground there. All right. 
Now, uh, because I want this camera shot and the next camera shot to transition into each other, I'm going to actually set the outro effect to none. And then everything looks good, so we're going to press OK. And now um, we're going to connect these together by syncing them. All right, let's do our second shot. Um, we're going to go ahead and add another camera shot module. Name it shot two. Sync these together. So the camera or the order of the modules, uh, the order that the modules are synced in determines the order that the shots proceed in. So you start with the cinematic base module, then you go to your first shot, your second shot, and onward. Uh, they'll just automatically chain them together with however many shots that you want. Now, because we want our second shot to start at the same location the first shot ended, we're going to go ahead and copy this end position from the first shot. And we'll use that as the start position for the second shot. Now, we want our camera to pan over here to the left and maybe zoom out a little bit. So we'll go ahead and select this position here. Log position to clipboard. And we'll go ahead and paste that into the end position. And we're going to set the end height to about 150 meters. I've tested out most of these camera shots uh, in the editor already. Uh, obviously, while you're creating camera shots, you want to be constantly testing to make sure that you're getting the shots that you want. We're going to go ahead and copy the target position from the sh first shot and paste it into the target position on the second shot. Make sure the cinematic border is on. Set the intro effect to none. And we're going to set, uh, leave the outro effect as fade to black. All right, let's go ahead and launch the mission and see what our two shots look like so far. So you can see we start here and kind of rise past that sentry post. I'm still locked on that point in the middle of the fob. And then our camera shot pans to the left and zooms out maybe a little bit and we get a better view of um, the layout. And then it will uh, just end the shot and put us into our player character. All right, so far so good. Let's add another shot. We'll name it shot three. For this shot, we want this to focus on the helicopter that's coming in. I have named this heli uh, helicopter Heli-1. So we're going to change the name of the target to Heli-1. Now that we've set the target position to Heli-1, it will focus on that helicopter as the helicopter comes in. Set the cinematic border, set our intro and outro durations. And we don't need to change any of the rest of these settings. Maybe we want this shot to be a little bit longer, so we're going to set that length to 15 seconds. Uh, so we get a nice shot of the helicopter coming into the fob. Now we'll go out here. Uh, maybe we want our shot to start somewhere over here. So we'll go ahead and log that position to the clipboard. We'll go into shot three. Uh, this is another reason why it's good to name these shots, because you can just click on them in the editor panel over here. Um, and know that you're getting the correct one. So we want our start position to be here. Maybe we want it to start nice and high, so we'll do 200 meters for the Z value. Click OK. And then we want our shot to end somewhere over here. Yeah, we'll say right around here. So again, log position to clipboard. We start end position, and we don't really want it to change height, so we're just going to set that end position to 200 as well. Once we have our shot set up, we need to, again, sync the modules together. And then let's test it out one more time. Get the nice rising shot over the FOB. And as the camera pans over, we can start to hear the helicopter in the distance.
We get the nice shot of the helicopter approaching the FOB with the sunrise in the background. And then we fade to our character. All right, looks good so far. Let's add that final shot of the camera zooming in on the character so the transition isn't quite as abrupt. So I'll add that camera shot module. We're going to set the target position to our character name. Don't forget to name your shot. Maybe we want this shot to be a little bit shorter. Just a five second shot should be fine. We don't need to change time acceleration. We do want the cinematic border. And we want our fade in and fade out effects to be the same. All right, so now we'll go over here. We've had a couple shots from um, from that direction, so we'll we'll take another shot from this direction. Maybe we'll have it zoom in right over here over this medical tent. So we'll start uh, by logging the start position uh, right about here. Go to shot four, and maybe we want it to start maybe uh, we'll say 20 meters above the ground. And then we'll go over to here. We'll click right in front of our character. Oops. Log position to clipboard. We'll paste the end position there. And because army characters are approximately 1.8 meters tall, we'll put 1.8 in for the Z value so that the camera zooms in directly on our character's face. And We'll set, press OK. We'll go back over to the modules, make sure they are synced together. And we'll go ahead and test the cinematic. I love this shot of the helicopter approaching the base. There are a lot of cool things you can do with this. And there we go. Not quite as an abrupt transition uh, as the camera zooms in our, our character and then we get to watch the helicopter come in and land kind of goofily because Arma, but that's fine. All right, one more thing. Maybe we want that to be a little bit more interesting. So maybe we want to add some music to the scenario. Now, here's how we can do that. Oh, I lost our modules there. There we go. All right. We are going to create a trigger. Uh, we'll give it a, a small area. It just has to... Um, We'll change the size to 10 meters uh, radius because all it has to do is surround this uh, cinematic base module. And what we're going to do is go in here and we're going to change its activation to game logic, uh, leave its activation type as present, and then we'll go down, uh, we'll scroll down and uh, change the trigger effects. And we'll go ahead and set music. Uh, let's see. Maybe we want it to play that uh, the drafted, uh, the song drafted from the Prairie Fire soundtrack. So we'll set music to drafted. Um, and uh, the reason that we set this activation to game logic is because the um, the cinematic base when it starts the the cinematic uh, spawns a game logic entity. So when that cinematic begins, it'll create that game logic. Uh, and the tr trigger will detect it and then it will start playing the music. So now let's try this one more time with our music added and we'll see what it sounds like.
All right, and there you have it. So that music will continue playing until that track ends, so you get some nice music while you wait for the helicopter to land. Um, but other than that, that is how you use the cinematic module and the camera shots module from SOG Prairie Fire. Uh, you can use this for all kinds of cool things. Um, I've played around with it a little bit. Uh, one thing that I haven't found out how to do yet is how to start a cinematic in the middle of the mission. Um, I haven't been able to get this to work uh, without having the autoplay at mission start, um, but I'm working on trying to figure that out, and hopefully I'll be able to post some updates with that later. But uh, as always, um, I hope this was helpful to you, uh, and uh, I hope to see some cool and creative ways that people use this. And as always, enjoy.